And then you've got people like Al Bayrouni. Al Bayrouni in the year 973 to 1050. This is uh, a man who has written about 200 books. And he's written on astronomy, mathematics, geodesy, observ observatories, astrolabes, social anthropology, science, and faith, and so on. And, and, and from there, you find emerges a, a huge uh, interest in calculating machines, and we call them mechanical computers. And the astrolabe is a very, very important piece. There's no time to go into details of the astrolabe, but you can see here in some of the manuscripts, they are actually inside mosques. It's hanging on the wall. It's like having a laptop modern laptop hanging on the wall next to the imam's uh, mihrab. That's the sort of how popular this calculator tells you it's a GPS system and it tells you where you are, at what time, where is the direction of the sun used in navigation, used and so on. But um, Al-Biruni in one of his manuscripts, he says, I would have not been able to do what I've done had it not been for a lady called Rehana. So it seems that there, is, there are some ladies lurking around in the background that we don't know about. There we are. Now you wait, wait for, wait, wait for, wait, wait a second, because there are a lot of ladies around in Muslim heritage, but we unfortunately don't know about. There are five million manuscripts in the world today. There are only fifty thousand of them are edited, and most of the fifty thousand, they are about politics and about religious arguments and about poetry. Very few, very few of them. Who have been, which have been edited that speaks about science and technology, about the work of people like you and me, not about the governments. So we need that. We've got this lady here. She was a, a genius engineer. She made those astrolabes, the mechanical computers. They, she needed to know about mathematics, she needed to know about astronomy, the tracing the stars and draw them on, draw them on the floor and so on. So, and then of course we've discovered a lot of ladies in 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 in, 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 in theology in fiqh. Uh, but that tells us that if they were there, then they must be somewhere else, because in fiqh it would be very complicated, very difficult to have ladies in Christianity until now have not been able to solve the problem of women's priesthood. And so we, we see that there are ladies in, you know, teaching sheikhs and so on from the time of the Prophet وسلم, until uh, hundreds of years later. But therefore we have an assumption that they must exist in other walks of life in engineering and mathematics and so on. We've discovered there are mathematicians like Sutaita in Baghdad and, and, and so on. But again a very important management uh, role and that is the role of health and safety executives. We've discovered that the first two health and safety executives in history, they were appointed by Umar ibn al-Khattab al one in Mecca and one in Medina. The one in Mecca, her name was Samra bin Nuhayk al-Asadiyya, al al and the other one is al-Shifa bint Abdullah. Now those two ladies, they have the power, even more powerful than the present safety executive officers, because the present safe, safe, health and safety executive officers, they have only the power of reporting. These ladies, they had the power of execution at the same time. So in other words, when they find somebody is cheating in medicine or cheating in weighing in things or importing something illegal or which is not useful or food that has gone wrong, she would have the guards with her and they would whip that person, close his shop. She had the power of doing that. And then when Shifa has finished from um, Medina, he sent her to be in charge of the whole administration in Al-Basra. So, you know, I don't want to uh, receive more claps but for us to speak about knowledge, knowledge is a university, knowledge is from education schools, and in the university world, uh, we have the first known university in the world, as a university, which is called Jamia, instead of Jamia, has been built by Fatima al fihriya Fatima al fihriya has actually constructed, not only just finance, but constructed and supervised the building of the first building of the university in the world. And she had fasted from the first day of putting the first stone and she continued every day fasting until they finished the project when she broke the fast and they opened the center. This, uh, this is in the city of Fez and, and, and uh, it's still Jamiat al-Qarawin. Right, I must move on very quickly because...